the Pythagorean theorem needs no introduction. But here we are. The variables in this equation represent the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. Using this special relationship, we can calculate the length of any of the sides if we only know the other two. This relationship has been known since ancient times and has proven exceptionally useful in everything from trigonometry to the familiar distance formula to even statistics. But the right triangle is only one specific type of triangle. And while the Pythagorean theorem is useful, its applications are limited. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a more general equation for a more general set of triangles? To understand how to generalize the Pythagorean theorem, we have to understand how it works, and for that, I'll show you my favorite proof. Who knows, maybe we'll discover something new. So to prove a theorem involving right triangles and squares, let's start by drawing some right triangles and squares. Now, let's add some more triangles to the figure on the left, just because I know where this proof is going. Notice that both figures have the same width and height, so let's make them match. Now comes the heart of the proof. Let's think about the areas of these two figures. In total, these areas are the same because the two big squares are congruent. When we break these squares up into their pieces, we can actually cancel some of these shapes from both sides, and the areas stay equal. In fact, all of the triangles will cancel here, leaving just the squares. It should be clear that if we add the areas of the two squares on the right, we will get the area of the larger square on the left. And what are these areas? None other than a squared, b squared, and c squared. The thing that I love about this proof is that you can capture it in a single image, this one right here. And the proof works for any right triangle. The diagrams are flexible. Uh, well, that's not right. Maybe we can salvage this. It looks like they still have the same heights and widths. I'm going to try to overlap these figures to see if we can get anything to line up. Parallelograms? All right, let's introduce a new piece to the puzzle. And while we're at it, let's bring some of that symmetry back. Yeah, I think we're getting somewhere. Keep in mind, though, we got here by letting the right angle collapse into an acute one. We'll do the obtuse case separately, because I don't want to have to deal with negative areas. They are not easy to draw. I encourage you to pause the video before we move on and convince yourself that all these triangles are congruent to each other, and the same with all these parallelograms. A rigorous proof would go into detail here, but I'd rather let the shapes speak for themselves. So what's the equation we get from this image? Let's take a look at the areas again. We have a squared, b squared, and c squared, as before. The triangles all cancel again, as well as two of the parallelograms. All that's left to do now is to find the area of this parallelogram. Here it is in context. Its side lengths are b and c, and these two angles on the bottom right together form a quarter turn. Remember the parallelogram's area formula. Just like the rectangle, it's base times height. Here, the base is b, and the height is c times the cosine of the angle opposite to side a. The area is bc cosine a. Now back to the equation from before. We just found the law of cosines. When the angle a is obtuse, the picture looks a bit different. Now the right side has more parallelograms. Here's the equation for this case. Let's find the parallelogram's area again. The base is still b, but now the height of the parallelogram is negative c times the cosine of a. The cosine of an obtuse angle is negative. We need to negate this value in order to get the positive area that we're looking for. That's where the minus sign comes from. So there it is again. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. And just like with the right angle case, the obtuse case and acute case can both be proven in one image each. I'm going to let this animation play for a bit to explore the space of possible triangles. Thank you all for watching my contribution to the second Summer of Math Exposition event. As far as I'm aware, this construction is my own discovery. It really surprised me, and I knew I just had to get it out there. I hope you all enjoyed watching, and maybe even learned something from it.